Hello everyone, welcome and thank you Brother Satsuringam and let's uh, before we start let's have a word of prayer. Thank you Father, we just want to commit this time into your hand and we thank you that we're going to have a wonderful time with you even as we hear your word. Thank you that you're opening our hearts and our minds so they can fully receive what you have in store for us today. Thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. So yes, uh, I hope that you all are doing well. Uh, by the grace of God and I uh, hope that you are also ready to receive from, from the Word. So uh, today's uh, message will be part two of what I, I have shared the last time uh, titled More is given to him who has. So if, uh, if, you're here, if you have not heard that and if you're here for the first time, maybe you join us for the first time and if you're interested maybe it will be good to go back and it will be on ZCFD YouTube, we can just go there and yes uh, it, it, will, it will be there so it will be good if you listen to the first part because today I'll, it's more like a uh, just a, like a reminder today so it will be good if you because uh, we really went uh, into the world and we really established uh, so uh, it will be good to hear the first part but anyway uh, welcome anyway so uh, yeah so last time we read from Mark chapter 4 and today I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 13 but just so that we just refresh our mind what we did last time the first part so maybe we'll just read from mark also mark the last uh, key scripture was mark chapter 4 verse 24 and 25 he says and he said to them take heed what you hear with the same measure you use it will be measured to you and to you who hear more will be given but whoever has to him more will be given for whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him so the last time we really established that who is this person who is the one who has that uh, mark is talking about so we established that the one who has or the one who hears so the one who hears and the one who has are the same because it's here in verse 24 it says to you who hear more will be given and he says in 25 for whoever has to him more will be given so it's used interchangeably so the one who have or the one who has the one who here are the ones who are who put their faith in him who believes in him and jesus says in john 10 that my in john 10 27 says that my sheep hears my voice so you and i who have believed in him are the one who has so more is given to him who has so that was what we went deep into last time and so today will just today will be more like a, a, a reminder a fresh reminder and just encouraging you to continue to receive the much more because you and I can receive the much more because it has been we already had like it says more is given to him or to her who has <clears throat> so from 13 uh, please go back and read chapter 13 but we'll just uh, uh, read read maybe not all the the whole thing so you can go back and read and it will really I believe in bless you also so uh, but today for today we'll uh, we'll read from chapter 10 uh, verse 10 Matthew chapter 13 Chapter 13 verse 10 and this uh, the second part I have titled it the abundant life because verse 10 says and the disciples came to and Jesus said to him this is verse 1 to 9 Jesus was just explaining that he was giving the parable of the sower and the seed and then in verse 10 says and the disciples come and said to him why do you speak to them in parables he answered and said to them because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it has not been given for whoever has to him more will be given and he will have abundance but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him so mark forces that he's saying the same thing that whoever has to him more will be given but here he's an added he says that he will have abundance amen so that's you and i we can have abundance because we have we can receive in abundance and we also establish that he says that even what for he whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away so we we have established that god does not take away yeah the only thing god took away is our sin our sickness our disease all sin has been taken away and john 1 says that behold the lamb of god who takes away the sin yeah but the gifts the blessing god does not take and john 10 again we see that it is the enemy uh, and 10 10 says that he comes to steal to kill and destroy he so he's the thief he's the one who steals not, not him okay so 
Continuing 13, therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you will see, and not perceive. For the heart of these people has grown dull, the ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their heart, and turn, so that I should heal them. Uh, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear for assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see and to hear what you hear and did not hear it I, I, I believe this is uh, Jesus still keeps speaking to us today he's saying to us right now you and I who have he says blessed are your eyes amen for they see and your ears for they hear Amen. And for assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it, and hear what you hear and did not hear it. And then in 918, therefore hear the parable of the sower. Here I just want to explain again that before, again he says, uh, before he explained the parable, when the disciple comes to him and in verse 10 he says, why did you speak to them in parables? He says, he answered and said to them, his, this is his disciples, okay, the 12 disciples, okay. He says, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. So this, this uh, words of affirmation or these words, the word, he spoke to them first about what they already have. He said, it has been given, it has already been given to you to know the mystery. Then again, he says in 16, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Yeah. And then. After that only he begins to explain to them. Likewise, even today, if you see that we already have, have what? We already have the heart to hear. We have the heart to receive from him, right? Because we have, we are positioned to receive the more, the abundant life. So likewise, that he's telling the disciple, because you already know, because you already been given to you to know. Today we have the Holy Spirit in us who reveal all things to us. Amen. So because you already have it, because now you're ready to receive the revelation so then only Jesus begin to explain to them therefore hear the parable of the story that anyone who hears the word of the king kingdom and does not understand it the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart this is he who receives seed by the wayside 20 says and, and last time we, we have also established that to hear is to receive so here we, it will be more clear yeah, this word uh, to hear means is to receive also means to receive so because it says but he who receives to sit on stony places this is he who hears yeah the word and immediately receives it with joy again in verse 22 now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears again those who receive seed are the one who hears again 23 but he who receives seed on the good ground is the one who hears again so why it is so important to hear is because when we hear we are receiving amen so that again so so again we we, we 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 understand from here that today because we have we already have it has been given to us we are positioned or we are we are uh, what to say to ready to receive the much more not only uh, it has been in like in 12 says that whoever has to him more will be given and he will have abundance right and in abundance so in John again 10 10 says but the thief but oh, where is it yeah let's turn to John 10 10 says the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy but I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly so we already have the abundant life and because we already have him in us because we already have because when we have received Jesus into our hearts we already receive the abundant life yeah, we already have abundant life. And because we have it, now we can receive. And because Jesus has paid for all our sickness, all disease, and we want to say we are already healed. Yeah, because we already have healing. Because we already have healing, now we can receive uh, 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 health and healing and wholeness for our body. Now, this may sound a little strange because uh, it doesn't make sense. Because if you have them, why do we need to receive, right? But it is so in the kingdom of God. And if you even see, if you try to see it, even the kingdom is, uh, we, we know it's everything is like opposites. Like for you, it says uh, uh, the first will be last. Yeah. Uh, 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 what do you say? And if you want to be great, you have to be a servant. Or if you want to live, you have to die. So this, 
in, in, if, if you see in the natural, this, this thing does not make sense. But it, in the kingdom, that is how it is. And uh, yeah. So the best example would be like you having a, a, a bank account which, you know, have been filled with money, millions of dollars or billions or trillions, whatever is packed, is full. You have in the abundance, you have more than, you know, much more. But even though you can have the much more, if you don't receive or if you don't go and make the withdrawal, you still have nothing. Or you will not see, you know, you will not be... Uh, you not enjoy the benefit benefit of you having all this money in your banks. So something like that. So we, I think it has been everything has been put in the account, and the way we receive is by doing the one thing, by hearing, right? And and, and we we talked about uh, when the last time about Mary and Martha, and Jesus commended Mary by saying she has chosen the good part. This is the good part that He has given us. And what was Mary doing? She was listening. She was receiving from Jesus. So, and Jesus said, and this is the, this part which he has chosen, the good part will not be taken away. So what you and I have will not be taken away. So it's, it's good to ask then why, maybe why we, we are, I mean, I mean we, we, according to the word, we are all blessed, we have been filled, but still, why are we not seeing the, uh, the blessing, you know, externally? And why, why, why is my body still sick when I'm still weak why I'm still poor all of that we can begin to ask and and yes I, uh, uh, but maybe the, uh, the problem is not because uh, we by now we know that uh, sin is not no, no longer no, no longer a problem God from God's end is no longer a problem because God has finished has done everything his part is finished he has uh, uh, done everything for us and his blessing and supply is continually flowing amen and under of course under the old covenant because of sin god could not reach out to man because every time god would reach out to them because of sin god would turn his uh, blessings away or he would turn his back on them and judgment would come you know all of that that is all true but today jesus bore all our all our sin today we don't have that so sin is not a problem then what is the problem god is not a problem because god's and he says much more so i think the problem is the lack of receiving even though we already have we are not using what we have so i want to remind you and encourage you all of us to do the one thing yeah we are maybe we're doing so many things since, since it's not working so maybe we can begin to do the one thing begin to hear hear who he says hear him and to hear or to receive from jesus himself because he says i am the life i am the bread of life yeah He's the one that we drop. Just as Jesus himself received from the Father. He says, I only say what I hear the Father say. Or what I receive from the Father. I, that, you know. And I only do what I see the Father. So, so likewise, we are also to do what only what we hear him say. And the Father has said, even in the Mount of Transfiguration. When Jesus transfigured and, you know, there was Moses was there. And Elijah was there. And of course, the three, Peter, James and John. And Peter was talking and suddenly God spoke. The Father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. So it was very clear. We have to hear him. So you and I are already positioned, place where we can we can be so called, let's say the receivers of his blessings. So because the so the problem is not on any, it's not a sin, it's no longer a sin, so it's not from God's end. But the problem is that we are not receiving, even though we have and we have been positioned. So I want to remind you and stir you up again to begin to receive and to hear and to receive from the word. Yeah, you got to read, you got to listen to teaching that reveals Jesus. The word says that, and again, I think it's in Romans that uh, we are being transformed. I think it's in Corinthians that says that we are being transformed how by beholding. So as we hear him, as we see, as we begin to behold him in the word. Yeah, we begin to be transformed into the same image from glory to glory. The transformation comes as we begin to hear and begin to see and begin to behold Him. So, amen. So, I want to encourage everyone to begin and to continue. If you have not can begin, if you have to continue, yes, to hear Him every day, not just Sunday or not once a week, but every day, every moment, take time to draw, to hear, to hear the words. Amen. And because... Uh, uh, he is constantly supplying. He is constantly, constantly giving his, flowing his blessing. So today, 
If you are sick in the body, continue to receive, continue to hear, continue to draw from Him. Because it is in when we receive in abundance. So what is in us, what God has done in us, can only manifest when we receive in abundance. So when we receive in abundance, it is out of the overflow that the life in us is manifested or is seen outside externally. Yeah. So when we become the light, the salt, when, when it overflows. So our life is to be that overflowing life. And that Jesus says again in John, that he who believes me, out of his heart, then you flow rivers of living water. Amen. So I want to again um, bring your heart and your attention to just spend time just doing the one thing, just listening and hearing in abundance. And again, Romans 10, uh, uh, Romans 5, 17 also says, For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive, the key word is receive. So if you're not reigning in life, maybe you are not receiving in abundance. Amen. So when we receive abundance of the grace and the gift of the righteousness, but so but much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of the righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus. So brothers and sisters, the key is that what Mary did, doing the one thing. And now it has been given to you, you already have. Now we are positioned to receive the much more. So that out of the overflow, out of the abundance, because our life is an abundant life. John 10, 10 Jesus says that but the life that I give us is an abundant life, right? So it is when we receive in abundance that, you know, and like Romans says, that we, are, we begin to rule and reign in life. We begin to see, uh, the, even outside, the manifestation and, and, you know, the blessing of what we are, who we are in Him, or what Jesus has paid for us. So I would encourage you there. So, yeah. And uh, towards the end, and uh, I just want to uh, bring this point also. I think it's very crucial because in order for you to have, because under the old, old covenant, the one of the one of the uh, problem was the hearts were always hardened. They were incapable of receiving. They were incapable of hearing. Now, now we just read in in uh, again in Matthew uh, Matthew Matthew thirteen, right? Okay, that blessed are your eyes. He says now. His disciples for they see and your ears for they hear yeah so jesus not only we see in the, in the books that he heals and he opened the blind eyes and you know the deaf but yes he has also opened our eyes the spiritual eyes so we can see and we can hear and that, that was one thing under the old covenant that they lack because we have jesus because hearing is really an ability of christ himself it is he is the one who is the one who the receiving one so to speak, yeah, the receiving one. And so, because we have Jesus in us, we have his ability to receive from the Father. Because God is the supplier. So if he has no receiver here on earth, then, yeah, we are all in trouble. And, and, and as, as, as we said, that Jesus himself is the receiver. He paid the price to give you that, and he gave to give you that, that even though it's, it's, uh, it's just, it's, it, I mean, it doesn't, make uh, it doesn't uh, sound much if you say just to hear to listen but that is the one thing that even we see in Jesus life you know, the miracles that he did he did everything as he heard as he received from the Father that's how he did so at the cross again let's read uh, one more verse in John 12 and then I think we will can close there so John 12 uh, says in uh, verse 31 now is the judgment of this world now the ruler of this world will be cast out 32 says, and if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all. And people's, that's not, that's actually in italic, so it's not there in the original. So that's not the right uh, <laughs> word there. So it says, from the earth, will draw all to myself. Draw all means what? Because in verse 31 said, now the judgment of this world. That means he took all our judgment. And when he's lifted up where at the cross, that all judgment, he became the receiver of all which our sins, all our, our, our sickness, all our disease. He took it all upon himself. He became that magnet or the, what do you know? Yeah, magnet is the word. Everything, the wrath of God, he, he absorbed it into his, himself, into his body. And he gave us the very thing that he had when he went before he went across. That to be the recipient of all the blessings, of all the inheritance, sweetness. So today, you and I are so blessed to have uh, his ability today with us. So look, I encourage you brothers to, to, to make use of that ability that he has given us. We have his ability. So, and we are called to be good receivers. So if you are good receivers, you will be good givers, right? 
and as we receive his love for us, as we receive the blessing that he has given us by hearing and listening to him, uh, we become a blessing. Transformation begins to happen effortlessly, begin before you and you know it. So God bless you. Thank you for taking your time and listening to this time. Thank you. And God bless you. Yeah. Let's pray. Thank you. Thank you, Father, so much uh, for this wonderful um, time that we had with your word. And thank you for reminding us once again that for the gift that you've given us. You have given us the abundant life. We have already given all things. You have put all things in our account today, Lord. Even as uh, we, we continue in our journey, Father. And you teach us and guide us and lead us that we continue to be good receivers like Jesus did. Because you are in us, Lord. We continue to draw like you did from the Father and to be a blessing. Thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 It's time to receive our benediction. So may I call upon Brother Victor to give the benediction. Okay, everyone. So we, we will be partaking of the Lord's Supper now. So if you have your bread and your cup of juice, then we will partake and receive together. So uh, uh, before we do that, I will just read again from, from the Word in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 says, For I received from the Lord that which also delivered to you, which I delivered, I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my blood which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In this manner, in the same manner, he also took the cup of the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So we are doing this in remembrance of him. So that's the Lord's uh, command to, uh, for us that we should partake and eat the bread, which is, signifies, uh, speaks of his body, which has been broken for us, and his blood, which has been shed for us, the remission of our sins. So uh, we are doing this in remembrance of him. We remember of his finished work. That means, again, uh, we just talked about how we have all, he had already paid everything for us. We have the abundant life. And that richness of his life includes health. And again, in Second Corinthians, we just, in the same chapter, it says, to partake worthily, to, uh, to eat with uh, discern, discernment is uh, to, 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 uh, to take, not to take the cup and the bread together in the sense uh, uh, they are not one in the sense uh, that this bread is not for our, uh, our sins. The blood is for our sins. That is the forgiveness is by the blood. That the remission of sin is by the shedding of his blood. And the body has been broken or has been striped, has been wounded for our healing. So that is very clear. So we are to eat with this discernment, knowing that his body was uh, for our healing. So today, if you are having any symptoms or any sickness or any disease, whatever it is, does not matter. Today is the day that you receive your miracle. So as we partake in remembrance of this, I believe that you're going to receive your bread too when you receive, when you receive your miracles. So we will first partake of the bread. So I'll pray for the bread and then uh, we will eat together and then I'll pray for the cup and then we can drink together. Okay, so let's pray. Mm. And as we pray, just remember whatever sickness is, just see that sickness been taken care of that by his stripes, by his wound that he took up, he too has taken your pain, your sickness, your disease, whatever your condition, just uh, see that at the cross. So let's pray. Thank you, Lord, once again for this wonderful time that we can do this in remembrance of you. We remember, Lord, that you bore our sins, you bore our sickness, you bore, you bore our diseases, you took our pains, Lord, in the bio wounds, by your stripes, that we are healed. Thank you, Lord, that today, Lord, you have given us an exchange, your health, your life, divine help. So even right now, see your bones being healed. Yes, see whatever your condition being healed even right now. As Jesus took in exchange for your sickness, he gave us his health, his life, his divine health, flowing in your body right now. Even, even whatever issue is healed. Yes, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's eat and part it. Yeah, and then 
Let's take that and bring the cup together. But before that, again, let me pray for the cup. Thank you, Lord. Yes. For your precious blood, which you have shed for the remission and for the forgiveness of our sins. Today, we have forgiveness. And because we have forgiveness, we can keep receiving. And thank you, Lord, that you have cleansed us and washed us from all our unrighteousness. Your blood has qualified us. Your blood has set us apart today. You have sealed us with your blood. Thank you, Lord, for the covenant that we, have, that we are in. Thank you, Lord, for the remission and for the shedding of your blood, Lord. We are forgiven, past, present, future. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's drink. Okay, thank you, everyone. And uh, before, uh, let's, uh, uh, let me give the benediction. Let's bow our heads and pray. Thank, thank you so much, Lord, for this uh, time that you've given us, so time of communion, time of your word, and even as we leave from this place. Thank you, thank you, Father, that uh, you will remind us, you will keep remembering you, what you have done for us. Thank you. Now the Lord, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you all. God bless. See you. Thank you everyone for your presence. I hope everyone is blessed by this service and I hope you guys are looking forward to it and just in case you miss out our previous Sunday and any of the sermon that you want to you like to listen again, kindly go through our ZCMD page in YouTube, in Facebook. While doing that in YouTube, you can press the subscribe button over there. And if you love, do please like and comment. And feel free to contact us at any time. But till then, stay blessed, stay safe. We'll see you next Sunday, the same time, same place. And thank you. May God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.